Hello friends and welcome to another late night post work beer review. So I finished work and yeah I'm going to review some beers because it's November, December, it's the time I usually go and ramp up the amount of reviews I do because uh, tis the season. <laughs> and we're actually doing a re-review today. This is something I reviewed back in 2001 and this is from Kisakura Brewing Company. It says Kyoto Matcha IPA. And last year, my mom actually went and visited the brewery. So you can kind of see here, she brought back this nice sort of English pamphlet here. I don't know how well you can see it. Of course, now it doesn't want to do the close-ups. Along with like picture, um, I'm guessing this is like um, the Japanese bottle of this here. Now, when I reviewed this in 2021, I can't remember all that much. Only two things. One, it was, it was greener beyond all comparisons. It looked like one of those St. Patrick Day, St. Patrick's Days beers, you know, when they make those cheap lagers and dump green food coloring in it, kind of looked like that. Um, if even more green, really. And two, I remember not being all that impressed by the flavor. Um, the rest, however, I can't quite recall. I, I didn't go and um, re-watch the review. I kind of wanted to go into this blind again, you know, since it's been some time. So this is 8.3, uh, no, 8.5 ABV, uh, brewed and bottled in Kyoto, Japan, obviously. And it says here, malt beverage with natural and artificial flavors and FD and C, yellow number five, yellow number six, blue number one. So yeah, um, not 100% pure coloration here, but anyone who knows matcha know, will look at this and say that it is way too green to be matcha colored. Uh, matcha being kind of a dull green. So, um, there is matcha in it though, because you do taste it. And it's from Uji in Kyoto. Uh, Uji someplace, was some place that I visited. It was one of my favorite places that I visited in Japan. Uh, not just because I love the, you know, Genji Monogatari, but also to just wonderful temples, um, not as busy. It, it has a much more rural feel than even Kyoto does, and Kyoto's not super urban anyhow. Uh, but even more so, Uji being out there, it you know, you go and visit like a temple and it's just like in this really... Um, mundane yet beautiful residential neighborhood. I, I absolutely loved it. I mean, if I ever won like a billion dollars, I would go and purchase a summer home in Uji. <laughs> Let's see here. Um, the Specs Type Japanese Fusion IPA Malts Pilsner. Interesting. Hops, Saws, Cascade. ABV 8.5. IBU 70.6. Okay, and um, we're almost four more four minutes in. Without much further ado, let's just go and pour this one out, shall we? Oh, and I won't even need this. I forgot. Kizakura, they have these pool tabs, handy dandy pool tabs on their things. Makes for a nice noise when you open it, too. Kind of, you know, they really should use those for American beers. Now, I have no idea how long this has been on the shelf. Oops, I'm kind of overpouring it here. That's okay, not too overpoured. Only, it's not overflowing, just three fingers worth ahead. I did a better pour last time. And tell me, does this not look even greener than St. Patrick's Day beer? Can't tell me this shade of green is natural matcha colored green. Top is almost, head is almost shamrock shake colored. <laughs> hmm. 
Okay, so a goodly amount of hopping is still in the aroma there. Kind of pine needle, floral. <clears throat> Spicy. Underneath that is sweet malts and almost like a licorice kind of smell. It's it's quite odd. So yeah, almost like a licorice-like note to it in the malt base there. Doesn't quite mesh. I was thinking something much more earthy. Um, matcha having sort of that earthy aroma to it when it's made itself. But i um, not getting too much earth notes here. A little bit overly cold for my feel. Should have probably let this warm up a little bit more. It's only out for about five minutes. But yeah, onto the palette now, shall we? Oh, there's the matcha. <laughs> And there's that odd licorice kind of taste to it again. Of course, sort of, um, you know, licorice, traditional root beer kind of thing. In the mids and in the finish, and also lingering on the palate in the long finish. Up front, a decent dose of hot bitterness. Not super intense. Um, probably due to age. I, I would venture that this has probably uh, been on the shelf for a bit. Oh, wait. Is that a date right there? I can barely see it. Uh, VFE2A. So it's a production code. So, I mean, if you know what the production codes are, yeah, you can go and date it. I don't know the production codes, and I don't feel like going and Googling it right now, because it's probably going to take some time to Google. Pretty chewy body. The matcha is kind of there as an earthy note in the mids. Not particularly strong. But it does show up especially in the top note there. Which is odd because it doesn't really show up in the aroma. I'm guessing this one is fresher than the bottle I reviewed before because the flavors seem much more bright and it definitely does give the impression of drinking an Imperial IPA with the addition of, you know, matcha. Unfortunately, I, I do wonder why they added so much green food coloring to it. I'm... It would be enough just to have the matcha in it and have like the matcha flavor and we take your word for it. You're a craft brewer, you know? Um, if you have like a beer with strawberry puree in it, we don't expect it to be radioactive red, you know, <laughs> like Kool-Aid red.
yeah, that sort of matcha earthiness, it really blends into that hot bitterness, so it's kind of hard to suss out, you know, because um, matcha being somewhat bitter, that bitterness of matcha is kind of overshadowed by that sort of resiny, piney kind of bitterness of the hopping. But it's there. It's just, you know, in the shadow of the hopping. Yeah. So other than that odd licorice note, and I don't remember, I don't know if I mentioned that last time. I'm wondering if it was there last time, um, if I noticed it, or if it's something that disappeared with age. Like I said, this one tastes fresher than I remember the other one being. Which does bode well for some of the other beers I'll be reviewing. So um, I have two more beers from uh, Kisakura to kind of go and re-review. So if they are fresher, then I am, I am kind of looking forward to it. Yeah. I will give it credit, though it's an Imperial IPA, but it doesn't have that problem of turning into like being tongue scorchingly hoppy, nor being like having so much residual sugars to it that it's cloyingly sweet. It's nicely balanced. So yeah, I, I'm actually, since my previous review, I remember being kind of disappointed, you know, it's gimmicky looked fake green. Um, this one, this time it actually feels like there's a serious, you know, um, Imperial IPA behind it. Um, would I drink this again? You know what? I think this would be my St. Patrick's Day beer and, you know, St. Patrick's Day has nothing to do with either matcha green tea. Uh, by the way, I probably should explain it to those who don't know, but matcha green tea is the powdered green tea, the one that's the fine powder. And you use the whisk here, which is on this la on the label here, to kind of whip it up into a frothy, foamy sort of thing with the hot water. And um, it's part of the tea ceremony in Japan. So um, deeply ensconced in Japanese culture. Um, I've only had it properly done maybe about two or three times in my life. It is enjoyable. Um, though if I'm going to be honest, I kind of prefer like sencha, the flavor of sencha green tea to um, matcha. But... Uh, that's just me. But yeah. Well, if I remember this was about five or six dollars when I bought it. I think it's about the same um, at Tamura's. Um, pretty unique, but not so far out there that it's challenging. Well, coloration-wise, it's challenging, but flavor-wise, it's not so far out there. Um, give this a shot if you think you can get it fresh enough. I think my disappointment from the last time I reviewed it was due to a lack of freshness. Not that I can tell um, for sure, but this one definitely tastes brighter. Much more hop presence there. And yeah, I'm going to have me a piece of cheese now. And that, folks, is your beer review for this evening. Cheers.